between well i mean literally he is a mix between east and west he's a russian guy <laughs> but like there's a lot of anime in his style and also a lot of western animation so i mean pretty particular in hotel transylvania there's a scene where dracula's running down a bunch of hallways yeah. and he's doing like his anime run where he's, he's got, got his arms the, behind, behind him and i'm just yeah. like wow this is i love that man yeah uh, i that's i'm down i with gotta Jack. watch uh it's it's something you never thought you need to see. Hotel, Hotel, <laughs> Hotel for Dracula. Hotel for Hotel for Transylvania. I gotta see Hotel for Dracula. What's your favorite besides your show? Oh, okay. And I should we just say now? And Mucha Lucha. So what are your favorite shows? Mikey works on we the we. Well, I have an intro to the show. What's your favorite animated show besides the one that you work on? Uh, my favorite animated show? Oh, there's so many. Uh, the Simpsons will always reign king. Sure. Yes. Great. Uh, one of my favorites, Clone High. Fuck you yes. Clone I've never uh-huh. seen Clone uh, High, but I, feel, I know Unbelievable. That I must. Super fun. That's, uh, oh, not Vince Gilligan. Who is... Guys? The Lord and Chris so, Miller. Yeah, Chris, yeah, the two... Really? Yeah, I, thought, was, I thought that was the guy that did Scrubs. Oh, he was the producer, but not the creator. Oh, I see. Phil okay. So, so yeah. was that Phil Lord, Chris Miller's, like, first Yeah, they thing? had uh, they had some sort of deal where they, were, you know, pitch a bunch. They were out of college, pitch a bunch of stuff. They pitched over 40 things. Ah. And the one that was picked was Clone, Clone High. High. And That's then it weird. got canceled in, like, a season and a half because MTV, MTV doesn't, doesn't, doesn't handle anything. doesn't have a history of, of long-standing animated programming, aside from huh. he was in Butthead See, it, That's so Daria. funny because there's so much talent over at Viacom with Nickelodeon. Like, you would yeah. think that they would have... Like someone come in and go like, yeah, maybe this is how you should. Well, the, the trick of not only selling a cartoon for MTV is to sell the idea that you should watch a cartoon on MTV. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so you got to sell two things, which is harder than just if Hence, you had a cartoon on Nickelodeon, which everyone's like, oh, I got to go there for my cartoon. Right. Absolutely. We had 2003's uh, MTV's Spider-Man. Which oh, yeah, was I think I remember that. Supposed to su- was sort of it was like the weird cell shaded. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they were kind of being like, Neil Patrick Harris as, as Spider Man. Yeah, no, no, Patrick Harris as Spider Man, which annoyed the shit out of me because he's doing he, the the least Neil Patrick Harrisy voice he's ever done. He's always like. I don't know MJ. I don't know. Oh, come on, and you're like, dude, just talk like you, because you would sound like. But he a wasn't great a brand at the Peter time. Parker. He wasn't a brand no, 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 until three years later. When he sounds like. He Not was already, really nobody. He was like pretty much a relatively unknown at that point. He was Doogie, Doogie Howser, <laughs> and then nothing for a very long time until um, Harold and Kumar kind of resurrected mm. his career as he was like the a, psychic in Starship Troopers. Yes, yes, he well, was. Well, this changes nothing about what I'm saying. I just meant when I'm watching it, I know what his voice sounds like sure, normally. Yes, so now. it's like, why are you doing this weird, like dark yeah. hero voice? You should just be taught. You'd sound like a Grace. Why do Doogie? Yeah, do Doogie, man. Yeah, uh, do Doogie. I do, do- Doogies. Most days. Uh-huh. Hey guys, Especially. welcome to Reasonable Beef, everybody. Hey. <laughs> oh no. Hey. My name is Tim E. Kish. I'm here with Dom Farah. Hey. And also, who's joining us today is it's um Mikey Heller. Mikey Heller. Mikey. Who are you, Mikey Heller? Tell us all about. Uh, I am a uh, comedian and cartoon writer. He's a comedian and cartoon writer. What do you? Uh, what's the show that you're uh you're cartoon writing? Cartoon Network's We Bear Bears. Hey. Uh, Mikey Heller is the uh, as a guy. That's me. Yeah. <clears throat> and he's joined us today to discuss something great. Yes. Great. A wall. Uh huh. That was great. Uh huh. A movie. Right. Not so much. Wow. Uh-huh. Yeah. Smack not as good as the wall. Down. Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, we saw the Great Wall. Yeah. Um, 2017 movie, uh, directed by a man. Who I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Zhang Yimou. Zhang Yimou. There you go. Um, very famous Chinese director, uh, starring Matt Damon. Right. Very famous, very famous not Chinese man. <laughs> famous Chinese man. Uh, in Great Wall. Yeah. And this is this is the 100 percent realistic legend of how the Great Wall was built. Yes. Uh, yeah. And well, not how it was. It had already at that point existed yeah, for why, centuries. Yeah, why it was built? Um, because of greed. Keep out the, <laughs> the monsters. Yeah. But yeah, how I, cool is it that they were aliens, right? They were aliens. Oh yeah, they, they kind of were, were not they? Yeah, they, they were think, aliens. That's cool. Well, no, but were they, or well, did no, the meteor they, just open them up? They open up the mountain. They explained it as a way. They explained it in a way. It's like, oh, the God sent it because we're greedy, and that sounds like the perfect, terrible reasoning someone would give as to why there's fucking aliens invading. Plus, mm. they kind of look like the Attack the Block alien. Oh, that's it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just, the whole time I was like, this is making me think of something. Yes, they're yeah. shaped exactly like the Attack the Block aliens. They're just not nearly yeah. as cool looking. No. Or as uh, fluffy. Because you see them all the time. Yeah. Uh, let's just launch into it. How sure. about they they play that like uh, 
sort of not quite showing you the monster game for the first five minutes of the movie, yeah. and then five minutes later show you a million That's of them. Two more than yeah. you ever wanted. There to were do. a lot of mon. There were three types. There were right. th- okay. three. Main type. Yeah. Which were like the big green dog bear things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then there was the ones that had stuff on their heads and they were bigger. They yes. looked like they the were spitting. And they were dinosaurs. around the queen. They were the, the bodyguards for the queen. And the queen who shakes her shakes her head. And they all had the, the yeah. gills that would talk the to each other. I, you know, I actually had the creature designs kind of cool. I, I kind of thought it was neat. I, I mean, think it's not the whole super idea inspired. was cool. Yeah. I mean, that so was a fine. This is actually a um, Max Brooks story. World yeah. War is the writer of World War Z. Very so strange. So he, he conceptualized the story, and then they're just like, yeah, well, let's, let's do this in China, I guess. Well, you know what's so weird about, the weirdest part about this movie is that it is a Chinese co-production. Yes. So it is mostly funded by the Wanda Group, which is a um, uh, Chinese conglomerate that owns Legendary Pictures as of last well, I, year. That's wow. fascinating. I didn't know that. Yeah. And, and they're buddy-buddy with the Communist Party of China as well. So sure. Like they're really <laughs> cool with the, with the state itself. So but, this is um, like kind of a huh. state, I don't want to say sponsored movie, but it's like a state, uh, definitely big nod saying well, they, this is okay. The intention of this movie is to create basically a Chinese film that will do well all across the yeah. world and especially America. And but the results were very different. <laughs> Actually, yeah, okay. were, sure. And I mean, like conceptually, almost. that is the idea of what it, it should have done. And yeah. um, the, the director says like, this is like a big deal that yeah. Chinese film has grown to this point that we can afford to do this. Uh, I guess that probably explains why they banked 100 percent on like the spectacle and mm-hmm. nothing on anything else. Yeah, that, it's it's really unfortunate. Um, I mean, I'm not defending the movie because it's not very good. <laughs> no, but but it's not. But it's necessarily not, it's, it's, bad. It's not, no, it's, no, it's, it's, it's so, very bad. It's so nothing. My, my problem is it felt really stale the sure. whole time, yeah. and and just stuff was just like on the, either on the nose or um, just not as imaginative as it could be. And knowing, I've only seen. House of Flying Daggers, which mm-hmm. is Johnny Moe's. Which I've never seen, but yeah. But I, I, and that was a long time ago, but I, I know that he is a revered, uh, one of the biggest directors in China ever, mm-hmm. and I feel like, oh, it seems like this movie might not be, and I know that in even his recent films, uh, not just this one, people have criticized them for feeling a, li- a bit more uh, blockbustery sure. than his mm. more grounded work from before but he's always been a very visual filmmaker yeah. i mean that's there's just, a lot of that in there but there's a lot of like 3d pleasing shots and yeah. i get kind of tired of those i didn't that's, did you see it in how 3D? much of it I is didn't. the pressure on him though to like that's exactly to make yeah. this that's so yeah when i was like oh but it was wasn't it like his film and his project to forward chinese cinema into the into america but then as you said before this is a max brooks story and the screenplay and story was also crafted by the the guys who did last samurai yeah mm-hmm. so that's so funny. That there is this two sides that yeah. are working for this movie. So we were actually just talking about The Last Samurai, just as an aside. Oh, really? Um, of, th- there's this video game that just came out called Neo, N-I-O-H, oh, yeah, were, and it's yeah. based on a, um, oh shit, who's the seven samurai guy? Most famous Japanese director of all time. What the fuck's his name? Akira Kurosawa. Yeah. Duh. Uh, and it's based on a, a Kurosawa script called Oni mm. uh, about this like Western guy who comes to Japan and basically becomes like the number one best guy, mm-hmm. um, which is pretty much what The Last Samurai was. So a lot of like a lot of it is thinking like, did this script turn into The Last Samurai mm-hmm. and also this game Neo? So it's like the same script diverged on two paths on one side, The Last Samurai on the other, this anime ass video game. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, I don't know. So con- story and who conceptualizes the story really doesn't matter all that much when you really think about it. It's no. all about the, the further execution beyond yeah. it. Well, it's always execution. I mean, you could say that well, about yes, any, re- any relationship. I mean, even down to... It's even just crazy how to, little it actually matters, sure. yes. is what I'm saying. It's like, the, the, it's it's the thing of like, and it's it's, I don't know if it's exclusively a foreign film thing. I think that part of it comes from subtitle translations and stuff like that, but it has this weird syndrome of like, you go from, you go from Matt Damon and... Pedro, Pedro Pascal. Pascal, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm gonna say Pascal, mm-hmm. but Pascal, Pascal, uh, them kind of in what felt like a now sort of relate, like friends in the action movie mm-hmm. relationship thing, and mm-hmm. it sort of felt a little like what Star Wars is gonna is turning into now, and it sort of felt a little bit like what the Marvel movies are doing as far as like all the two mm-hmm. dudes who always fight together. What blah, it blah, felt blah. like was was an overeager pastiche of Western buddy. That's uh, that's sure. a big criticism in China for yeah. the film is that it feels too American. Yeah, it's it's very much but, you could feel it. It's a it's a Chinese guy trying to make it. But, but then movie. that's what I'm saying. But then I, so what I was getting at was that you go from like that which. 
again, it was like I it was super familiar. So it wasn't like rocking my world, but it was at least charming enough. I felt like when they were together and talking to each other yeah. and then you would get the thing where and again maybe it's just like a subtitle trend it's like there's it's just the symptom of seeing the words instead of hearing someone perform it but you'd get the like as you know you are my daughter <laughs> and, and you're like I, I don't if there's this weird like dead behind the eyes quality mm-hmm. to certain like the, are you the, talking about like the the chinese translated text of how yeah. it doesn't yeah yeah and just and but so what i what i was also saying was like it's in concept the whole thing of like you know, he has the daughter and he's the general right now. And then he dies. So she becomes the mm-hmm. new general and all that. Like there's a, there's obviously a way there's always, we say this all, every fucking episode. There's always a way that that could have like really hit and yeah. really like mm-hmm. knocked your socks off and you yeah. felt for it when he died. And it's not even, I don't even mean it's cause like we needed to care. Yeah. Not in 103 about minutes, him, really. but you know, yeah, it's also, which very, is how long this movie is. And it didn't feel that 103 minutes. To how me, long did it, it feel? felt about three hours long. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a. Uh, everyone was just kind of a cardboard yeah. person. Yeah, even so him. Even him. The whole thing. It's my like my favorite line in this whole movie is, "Well, that's where we're different. I don't trust anybody." And it's like, yeah, yeah. okay. Uh-huh. Thank you so You're much. You're that character. Yeah, Matt Damon. Uh, they would have been better to have cast anyone else. What do you mean? I don't like. I think anybody. I think he's. But he's just Western guy. That's the problem. Is so what they what they want is um, to cast someone so America will go see the film. Yeah, sure. Um, but Matt Damon, uh, <laughs> I'm not excited by the idea of him fighting monsters. Sure. And they would have. He didn't off. seem very excited either in the movie. <laughs> That's if, true. He, he seemed very supremely bored. So I think if, all the if time. they had to, so a lot of people don't like that they went through the the, uh, the white savior. Uh, Right. Route of this movie, um, even though all the filmmakers have a different idea of it. But um, if they had to, I would have asked that they get someone who wasn't Matt Damon. Yeah. Yeah. Just because he. Even just if it was Willem really Dafoe instead. He was sure. the main guy. He's this weird, friggin', like, yes. gangly, yeah. that strange man. His, whole, his whole thing, I was not keeping yeah, what track of. What the hell was of. that about? I have no idea. They I don't were, know why he was there. They were confronted with the fact that there are aliens that are threatening man's existence, and then they'd be like, okay, so when are we going to get that gunpowder? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was like, you guys care about that still? I, I guess he supposed that's why he gets blown up at the end, because he made the wrong choice. It. it was a greedy choice. Yeah, but he was around for 25 years. He didn't like where he was at that point well isn't that it was obviously a yeah. great is place. that the theme <laughs> of the movie though about how people are punished for greed right where it's I guess, like sure, yeah that was the sure. whole yes uh, but like theme. and the monsters I say are green theme, yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. but um uh, yeah i guess it didn't feel like a strong theme no, it exactly it wasn't no. they would remind me of it every once in a while but ultimately i mean the stronger arc was that this westerner comes into an eastern world and learns how great it is sure Right. But they didn't lean into that as much as, but he loves gunpowder. And also, he, I would have believed it more if he stayed or something. See, but it's tough for me because I know how, uh, sorry if there's any Chinese nationals listening, but just how kind of iron-fisted and, and gross the Chinese government is mm-hmm. of how I could very much see how a Westerner coming to the East and realizing how great it is can clearly be like a political message and a sure. political tool. It's hard for me to take any kind of crossover, like Chinese crossover media mm-hmm. at face value because it's like, okay, what do you, uh, where, where's the propaganda here? Sure. Like, where is actually the, the, the but thing But what if it was it? leaned the other way where uh, well, we've done Matt plenty Damon of, comes yes. in and says, this is how you fight, and then tells oh, everyone God, how they're yeah. fighting. He's like, you, yeah, you're thinking too much. I think a lot of people, I need my bowl. Uh, I think most people have probably assumed that's what the movie was. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And it really, it didn't turn out to be that at all. Like, I, I read an lot. interpretation of he's just some rube with a magnet. Like that's what it ends it up being. Is, he's a guy who uh, can fight. I mean, General Lin saved the day more than he did. Sure. At the yeah, end. yeah. Yeah. And there's definitely a, a point to be made of her being the main character of the movie. If, I would have liked it if she was. I mean, yeah, she was I, the most interesting part of the movie. Sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah, but I also didn't see she was like a great actress. Yeah. Sure. And maybe it's the translate. Maybe it was like the speaking a different yeah, language. Chinese thing actress whatever, speaking. Yeah. Speaking English, I mean, just it just there's I don't yeah. know. You she, lose, she went through way more. You just said that she her dad died. She be, she has to yeah. lead everybody. She you has know. to she makes those orders to go to the capital to yes. go fight the monster. And so, then she she says, "Let's try the no, we must try the hot air balloons." And yeah. then all of her people she die, makes, yeah, and like she kind of she like, makes all of the active choices. Yeah. And then he's just like around. Well, so Mad Max, <laughs> right? His arc is Mad Max. To be around sure. Fury Road. That's exact. That's let's draw the comparison right there. Furiosa is really the main character of the movie, but it's called Mad Max. 
Max. Mad Max is on the posters. Mad Max mm. is just there for most of the movie, and sure. really the whole focus is on this girl. You sure. can't sell the movie for whatever reason on the girl as the hero, though. I, I guess... I don't know. I don't want to undercut the fact that I didn't hate Matt Damon in this movie, and no, I think he I plays an fine. important role in this movie. Didn't understand the voice. Was doing. Yes. Well, <laughs> yeah, I was really confused. Like, who is this guy? Was it almost Irish or like, what was that? Fought her mini flags. Like it's yeah. changing as he, he's like doing a bad Native American, and then yeah. he's Irish. And <laughs> no, then I didn't. I didn't get the Native American thing at one point. I yes. was like, I didn't get Dude. who he was or what he was doing or why he cared about anything. Pedro Pascal was fun. I think it was fun. fun. fun with that's in this that's movie. what I was happy. Like again, and so to, for on the gunpowder thing, like why were they even giving a shit about? It? Like I at least appreciate more now than ever. Like I, I would rather know like the simple cartoony versions of like these guys want the gunpowder because that's what they want, and these guys want to stop the monsters because of them protecting everyone yeah. from monsters. And Matt Damon doesn't know yet. And like I, I can just roll with like, all right, sure, fine, that's clear. Like when they were all compl- mm-hmm. when they were scheming before the yes. battle, and like, oh, so we're gonna sn- when everyone goes to battle, we're gonna go and steal the the gunpowder. I was like, okay, I, I like that I get this. I like that I that it is very c- clean cut about like what everybody's up to. But I had this weird moment when Willem Dafoe showed up, where it felt like this this reverse situation where, like, if you're watching, um, a movie like. I don't know, maybe it would be just as weird, but like we were watching a very American movie, all white actors and stuff, the the and and Asian guy shows up with the American army or whatever, and then you see like in the shadows an older Asian man, and they like kinda can they like look at each other and immediately assume that the older Asian man's gonna break them out. Like I had yeah. this weird <laughs> like reversing where I'm like Right, when they're all tied there, up. When you're watching yes. this in China, when you see the only like the one white guy who's in the movie and then he sees another white guy He's like they come immediately on over, were yeah. like he's gonna oh he's right gonna so they're gonna mm-hmm. yeah so those two are gonna work together yeah, I guess <laughs> because it, they're it, well, I, I didn't understand um, like anything <laughs> anything uh, that's really, I just hit myself with a hammer and I don't understand anything uh, no but um, like Willem Dafoe I just thought he lived there at first yeah <laughs> and I didn't really yeah, I was yeah. curious what he was doing and then. Yeah. He said he was a prisoner. Didn't seem like prisoner. He seemed no. like he was. He, he right, but th- that's like a political prisoner where it's like they let him. They just don't let him leave. Like they but let he, him do what he, he wants. said that the the meals here. He's the one who says the meals are good. They're regular. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted to know what is the life you want to go to. Mm-hmm. He wants yeah, to be sweaty in the desert with a bunch of gunpowder. That's what and, he said. I want to have a bunch of women. Twenty five years. Yeah, just he waiting didn't have for his chance to get out. I suppose. I really think he was there just to. Establish why she speaks English. Why anyone sure. speaks that's English? Probably, I really yeah, think that's that that's what it is. Yeah, because I, I was like, you were here twenty five years. You gotta at least be fine with it now, right? And you couldn't have. I mean, all these battles have been going on. Well, they haven't yet because it's sixty. It's sixty years apart. Yeah, right? yeah so the first this was time. the first. Oh, one. sure, you're right. That was you're the first time right. in sixty. But years. that makes it even weirder that he doesn't go. What the fuck is going on? Yeah. Like, why are there alien yeah. dogs? When anyone's presented with that fact, I feel like you're. Your goals prior should are kind of null and void. Well, but he, so yeah, that does beg the question for how long the wall is. Also, it's why is like a bunch real, of other battles happening, or is it only because that valley is where the it, monsters come in? Well, That's yeah, that, really that true, mountain, yeah. the big green mountain, right. was in the background. So I That's guess it's true. So it's just right there. Why did they build the rest of this wall? <laughs> like instead of just this like mile long <laughs> stretch case. of this valley, <laughs> just in case. Yeah. They also say that it took seventeen hundred years to build the wall. Well, did they say that we built this wall specifically because of the alien dogs, or was it? I thought Good in the question. the prescript of the film with the subtitles said that the wall was built for many reasons, or yeah, and, and this, this is, is one, of, one the, of the one legends. of the legends. Sure, okay. So I think they always had the wall, and then the aliens came. And they're like, oh, thank, oh, God, thank God, God. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> thank God the wall is right near the wall. We'll make sure we fight them at the wall. Justify this damn purchase. <laughs> really, also lucky that. You know, less than a mile outside of the wall is where the how where come, the monsters. How come the crashed? monsters just don't go the other way? That's true, because they well, because they want to get to the capital city, and so they can feast. You could uh, find. I mean, travel the other way. Uh, travel up the wall. Go around it. I don't Maybe. know enough about Chinese geography to explore. I don't know what's can to they the not, left or to the right of a wall. Can they not? Um, yeah, neither do I. Uh, but um, can they not like be away from their green mountain for too long? Mm-mm. She would always call off and say like, "Let's go home, guys." And yeah, like, at one point they it looked like they were winning b- big time. The sure. monsters were like fucking everybody up, and then she's like, "Ah, enough of this." Yeah, <laughs> and that seems to be the 
what the style has been of these battles is eventually the the monsters go back home. Yeah. Well, so here, here's the thing. I think the the justification behind that was they've killed enough of the monsters, and now she needs to feed, right? Uh, well, because that was the whole thing where she doesn't create things until the the guys come back and feed her the meat that's in their stomach. Right. So I guess she was just trying to regroup and make more guys, so the next time they came at the wall, they would hit it harder and mm. kill all of them. She just wants sure. to eat and breed. Uh, yeah, just like me. Every sixty years. Yes. Look, what are they doing for 60 you years? You guys are harping on the wrong thing. Why don't I don't they try know to, the lore of the movie. Why don't they try to kill them while they're sleeping during that 60-year period? I, I don't know why they just <laughs> they said they literally have a line in that where he goes, why don't you go to the wall? It's like, people have tried, they died. It's like, yeah, well, people are dying here, too. Like, <laughs> yeah. You might as well give that a shot like a couple more times. What I, I didn't like is when they sudden, very suddenly were like, ah, a magnet. And then they said, yeah. magnets make them weak. But we don't really know that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was very suddenly out of nowhere. And it's like, well, I got a magnet. And we should try it. And now, okay, so you're also, a savior just because you thought to have that idea? They also didn't... I understand that once it eventually like became useful, but it almost makes it more offensive that in the beginning... I, I mean offensive like narratively, when he's like... What about this magnet when they're like deciding to I travel? Know. Like, what about this magnet? You think we should take this? And magnet. He's like, not nah. rock. <laughs> yeah, this it's a, it's a magnet, just so you know. Mm-hmm. It looks a lot like <laughs> just a big rock, but it's not. It's a magnet. And then he's like, I'll take it. Yeah. And it was, they don't really. <laughs> like, uh, it's not like he. He is truly a great man, for he yeah. kept the magnet. He, he, right. uh, yeah, it, it was definitely a moment Chinese of like, parable. I wonder how that magnet will come in later, huh? <laughs> I want him to remake this movie where it's like a big. Like red handled magnet, and he's just walking around oh, with yeah. a big Acme yeah. style magnet. Um, yeah. So can we? I do want to talk about the intro of this movie real quick. Where so they're being traced by the hill tribes, and before they actually get to the wall, yeah. and it's the slowest horse chase of all time. Yeah. Oh, do you yeah. guys notice how slow they were riding these yeah. fucking well, horses? I even just in horse chase in general is a thing I think c- cinema wise we're done with unless something changes real quick because like true. when I was watching it and watching the cut back and forth between the bad guys on the horses and the good mm-hmm. guys on the horses after about the third cut I was yeah. like I get it what we, we peaked need? at Hidalgo yeah <laughs> <laughs> Hidalgo I don't know man I don't I just think that that's like those are those there were weird little nuggets of that even in some of like the fight parts of it as as poppy and as insane as some of the some of the fight moments were they were like kind of weirdly outdated like is that because like is that the sim is that a symptom of someone who was trying to do american blockbuster probably maybe i feel and like then you we can, got a horse chase that's like kind of weird and like you could attribute old. a lot of it to that i, I think. mean any any blockbuster will always be watered down I don't know. But now that I think, though? I know that's. I was thinking. Well, there's a lot of great movies. So up there. <laughs> we, yeah. we we talk a lot about the Marvel movies and how they've kind yeah. of elevated blockbusters for better or for worse, whatever you think. Mm-hmm. The Marvel movies have kind of changed the way it is. You can't just do a big dumb idiot action movie anymore sure. and expect it to kill. And I feel like this is kind of a return to form to the old style, like pre 2008 American stupid mm-hmm. movie. Like I, I don't know. The, the the movie that kept coming to mind as I was watching this was I kept thinking of D War. Dragon, Dragon Wars. I knew Wars. you were going to say that before Dragon you said it. I was, just, I was just remember thinking about it because I'm just like, it was the same sort of middle of the road. Oh, you know what movie Asian I was thinking movie. of hmm. was um, Reign of Fire. What's that one? It has Christian Bale and it's a dragon, dragon movie. movie. And cool idea. And yeah. But like, it's not, you just said, what's that? And that's, I think, the legacy of the film. Yeah. yeah. I'm Maybe sure you it, think did, Pete's it dragon. Probably did fine. Uh, that movie out. stuck with me. I mean, that was one of those ones I just saw at a random time yeah. as a kid. And it, for some reason, burned it. Because I think it scared me because it dragons. like opens in like modern day London or whatever. Yeah. And then it's like this little kid, for whatever reason, is going down into a mine. He picks the wrong rock. Mm-hmm. He's like looking for, yeah. He <laughs> didn't have the magnet. magnet. Yeah. He's looking for a magnet. And he he's going to find his mom. He's trying to find his mom. And like all, everybody in the mine starts freaking out because there's like, it, it feels like there's an earthquake and it's all going to cave in. And then he at one point like comes face to face with a gigantic dragon. And then it cuts forward like 30 years and it's like dragons oh, yeah. have taken over Earth. And now all the humans are in hiding underground and stuff because of, of dragons. Yeah. And I'm like, that's sick. And it's, it takes, uh, <laughs> it's just the same thing where it's like, you got to kill. Oh, for them it was male, but there's one male oh. dragon. You got to kill the big. So it's all about the one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They all have this insect logic where it's just the one you got to kill and it'll kill the rest. Well, so all, that's that's really the the trope, right? Well, it was where weirdly, it's, you had to kill the queen. It was queen. video gamey, right? Yes. Where it was like, and they even like the way they're explaining it. I was expecting them to be like, and circle is how you do, yeah. you know, the yeah. forward slash. <laughs> like it was like press B, yeah, double tap. He, the he literally is stick. saying like, 
Go for the eyes. Yeah, he's like, go mm-hmm. shoot for the eyes. And it's the queen. That's Those ones point. are protecting the queen. <laughs> and it w- works like this when they, and then, they, yeah, they just kind of give you the step by he's, step. When yeah. they're sitting at the wall, like when Matt Damon and, and Pedro are like sitting against the wall when they're all tied up and he's like, it seems the blue soldiers. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. What's about they're, the red soldiers? Yeah. What is that? The red, oh, they're, they're the archers. They're the archers. Yeah. Do you need to hear it again? <laughs> the purple and the yellow and the all the yeah. other fucking colors. You didn't tell me what they I know. Did. I was weirdly so like, mad. I'm kind of hungry for the rest of this breakdown now that right. you yeah, yeah, it yeah. to me. Well, so, and that's another thing in, in Eastern media, like yeah. specific, we could talk about anime where they, it's all about laying out the rules. Like they always yeah. do that ahead of time. Like, oh, this is the red faction. Like they control like fire magic and they're like this. And I, I was... If you're doubling down on it, double down on it. Like, yeah. tell me how this the wall works. Tell me how all the the nameless order operates, and then they don't. And it's just like kind of useless information, ex- just for you to go like, oh, when I see a red guy, I know he's going to be shooting arrows. Well, also, who cares? Why do we need to know that? Yeah, I don't know. We don't well, exactly. You I don't guess need to know <laughs> that there's a guy who, when he's re- it's like, oh, okay, he's about to shoot sure. an arrow. And also the completely ineffectual female only jump off the wall and mm. die core. Yeah, hilarious. Well, that I mean, so again, so they're in the beginning more. So so in like the first battle, which I, is in the first ten minutes of the, the film, by the way, so minutes, right? insane to do a twenty thirty million dollar battle scene in the first ten minutes of your movie. I love. It. I mean, that's cool. That's cool. There were moments in that too where I appreciate because it it did feel so paint by numbers for so much stuff, and it was so like, all right, this isn't like really grabbing me. That like when the girls are jumping off the thing and bouncing up on the ropes, and then one of them just gets fucking a. Yes, bitten mm-hmm. in half and dragged along the ground. I literally like in the theater as I'm like, because you're sitting in and you're kind of bored a little bit, and you're like, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And then I was like, oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I had the exact same. Reaction. I also liked you said like you know the p- people don't they didn't really freak out every time they saw the monsters, but I I appreciated when the one because. From Matt Damon and Pedro's perspective, they couldn't see what the things were yet, which uh, in a different movie, it would have been fun to play with the fact that in that whole first battle, they couldn't see what the monsters were. Mm -hmm. Right. I went back and forth. I'm going to go. There's a bunch of tangents here. When that battle started, I remember having the thought, oh, neat that it's daytime. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're not doing our yeah. like monsters attack. Where is it at midnight? Well, I can't yeah, see. Sure. You can't see them and blah blah blah. I was like, cool. We're just sure wide open. But it would have been neat also like if it was at night and if they were still tied up and we were very much with them for that battle. We didn't get to see the monsters coming mm. up. So then when because the, for all they they don't know what the fuck they're shooting at the whole time. That's true. And then when but then you see on their their reactions when the first monster comes over the wall and gets on the top. They go. They both have the. Oh! Yeah, what the they fucking fucking out. fuck? What the fuck is that thing? Would have almost been like a. You almost don't even need to have them fight the monster. Have that be the moment where the the magnet comes into play, where it's coming at them. They're tied up, and then it oh. sits down. Then it stops. But you can't reveal the magnet's purpose so early. In sure, but I guess like, but you don't show. You don't talk about the magnet. Oh. Like you don't like cut to the magnet. And go like. Woo. It's like, like something it about it. It just does. Mm. It just does stop. Also, instead and, of having someone be like. Magnets make them weak. Yes. <laughs> magnets make them sleepy. Weak. Tactician Wang. Do we have a magnet? <laughs> Does anyone on the plane Wang. have a magnet? Strategist Wang. Dude, I love Wang. Strategist Wang. Yeah. I'm a Wang strategist. Like, I do think, we I think about <laughs> it? <yeah. laughs> but yeah, the, there was. So there's a. I at some point, and I keep trying to make this happen, but no one starts doing it except for me when we're doing these. But I wanted like the punch up game. Not even a game, but just like. So what do you do in that moment to like make it a little stronger? How what would have been the more interesting avenue to go down for? Like even with the magnet, sure. if they knew it was a magnet, but no one else knew it was a magnet, and if again it's like instead of that they come there and they're the best fighters, which was also is always weird. Anytime you have the thing where there's people who have been training for something for literally their entire lives and they're the best warriors and they're guarding the wall for monsters, and then when someone else just shows up and like kills them, I think really that's a, easy a part of the movie that's like at war with itself. Where like he comes in, and he's like, "I'm a little extra spice, and I'm gonna make it everything work <laughs> a little bit." <laughs> mm-hmm. But I'm a, little a part of spice. his, yeah, I'm a little spice in the in the war mix here. <laughs> but um, a part of his it's internal thing, especially in that beginning fight scene is marveling at their military style and their group think and Mm -hmm. the way they work for each other because he's a loner guy. So he's just going to join them and do their thing, but also be the best at it. So I think it's a weird thing. I think it conflicts with itself. Well, there's a Western... That's, oh, that's, that's the white savior Well, that's thing. the Western trope. Not even necessarily the Western or the, the white savior, but the um, 
the guy who has hands-on experience versus like the prisses who've trained. Sure. You know what I mean? Where yeah. it's just like I've been but in he had, shit but my he had, whole life. But he admires the training. Yeah, he thinks it's great. Right. And, and, I, and they admire his skill, like his he whatever can shoot skill balls he, with and arrows. He just picked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think, but I also he think shoots. that they don't say that one is any better than the other. Sure. And, and the the relationship between the the general and him reflects that, where they have like this mutual respect for each other, which doesn't end. In romance, Very at much all, appreciated, which right? is kind of cool. Didn't However, see that. part of me again, where I'm thinking like, oh, can they not show a Chinese woman with a white guy? Like, is that not like a thing that would be cool that, with, yeah. with like the the Chinese audiences? And that's just where my mm. brain went with that. I'm, but I'm not I, sure because I, 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 I don't, don't know, know what that it's like, and I, I know that you know interracial stuff is is I mean it's iffy here, but it's also iffy yeah. over there, mm. even probably even more so because there's such like a. a a Geminis oh, I society. hope that's not what it was because I did think it was cool and it, sure it's sequel fodder or whatever you want but like I liked that it was like you definitely thought they were going to kiss at that last yeah, one yeah sure and they were, they were and just it, just like partners in and fighting they, it's they, they, cool. they didn't even do the lean in or oh, anything yeah. like oh, there yeah. was kiss. none are we going to kiss moment it was just like you thought you were putting those pieces together and yeah and then they're just like sweet you, you and rock. that's the most logical thing about the movie it's like there's fucking alien <laughs> jaw dogs let's not fuck yeah, right now yeah. like let's yeah. fucking focus for a second yeah um visually pretty cool movie i don't know there, there was some stale, there was a lot of stale stuff yeah. a lot of yeah. a, a lot of pastiche of western stuff but then you have like a final fight scene in a rainbow tower like with right. stained yeah. glass. Yeah. Was it, like, was it weird insane. to have a movie about the Great Wall, but the whole end of it didn't take place at the Great oh, yeah, Wall? Absolutely. I think there was no other way to do it, though. Because, like... The wall was getting fucked constantly. I know. We saw barely all stood. The, I liked, and you were saying, show me how the wall works earlier, and I did I actually have the thought when I was watching it, there was a point in the beginning where they were showing how how a lot of the, like, mechanisms oh, yeah. fired and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is neat. And again, this is, like, the first ten minutes or so, so I was not... I was still kind of, like hoping for the best and so right. when I was seeing these things that I was like okay that's cool they're kind of showing me something I don't I haven't seen oh cool we see how the how they fire rocks neato do you know what my punch but, up for this movie would be primary one what? change the title there's no reason for this to be called the great wall I mean it's real again just like Mikey there. said it it doesn't really end on the great wall it's the last 30 minutes aren't even on the great wall when they and it falls in the first 10 minutes like they get past the great wall at the first battle right? yeah well, they're I already on top of it they're already my, beyond that's my the wall. question about um Towards the end when they're like, oh, let's go to the capital city. Did they have to cross the wall to get there? Or did they just They turn? went under. They they, they tunneled. Oh, okay. Sure. I got so confused. That was the, and I, oh, oh, man, we didn't think about and that. And I think that was why that was why the queen backed off in the fight. Yeah. That maybe makes sense. Because then they were they're basically like, oh, the fight, they were distracting mm-hmm. us on top of the wall while we were fighting them. But meanwhile, other ones were burrowing mm. underneath. Mm-hmm. And then that was how they got. I kind of think some of the CGI was rad, uh, specifically the, la- the last yeah, scene yeah. where you see the grunts like swarming around her as her guards are kind of protecting mm-hmm. her from it. I'm just like, all right, that looks kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I guess yeah. just no, like was, you know, I, some you get a real sense of how overwhelming the threat is. And I, yeah, I think there were a lot of them. yeah, there were yeah. A lot I mean, just by virtue like of showing a lot of a thing, and like yeah, that's that's simple, but that's also kind of demanding to create mm-hmm. that much of a thing on screen and mm-hmm. like and render that i always though like i mean and it's weird and you know because it's it's literally shot by shot there's different people doing it they give more attention to one thing and th- than the other thing but see like i'm it's amazing when one of the ones that has a lot of them in it looks okay because those ones are the ones that it starts looking like a video game yeah. and it starts mm-hmm. looking like uh, you know the, the horde coming and you just gotta yeah. hack and slash your way through but sure. like I liked when we had some of the moments where you're real up close in one of those things' faces, because they had like cool designs on their skulls and stuff. They had sure. like their eyes were back here, and their eyes were for whatever <laughs> they got reason. Shoulder eyeballs. Yeah, but like so, I, it would always be like those weird, intimate close-up moments, and where you could see that they were like kind of wet and stuff. That mm-hmm. stuff always, I'm like, in any monster thing, like yeah. there's, I think in um. In super in Batman vs Superman, there's a part when what's his when Doomsday first wakes up. I thought he looked infinitely better when he was just kind of standing there and we were really close mm-hmm. and it, you were just like, fuck, that's really, that's like unsettling. That <laughs> yeah. looks like a, like a fleshy. The cave troll from yeah. Harry Potter one. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, he, <laughs> he didn't look so good. Uh. Well, now he does it. I remember at the time thinking that that was just like state of great. the art. Yeah. Well, even the, even the, especially in those early Harry Potter movies, anytime they made the characters cgi like whenever harry's getting oh, like, yeah. tossed around <laughs> it looks <laughs> insane it's a ps2 cut scene. oh have you ever oh, watched uh, men in black on blu-ray no, no you gotta don't do that to me it's so funny because 
they did not make this movie for Blu-ray. They yeah. didn't know Blu-ray existed. Oh, of course sure. And there's this, you know, all sorts of scenes. But the one I remember most is um, uh, uh, Tommy Lee Jones is talking to someone, and then Will Smith's in the background, and a tentacle is yeah. is, is dragging him around uh, right. the car, and it looks like worse than a video game. Right. It's just like wait, is he? Well, it's 1987. Is yeah, right? but so it's, it's so. Like, f- it looks so f- in Blu-ray. It looks so funny. Well, so is Will Smith CGI in that part? Yes. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> Take a look sometime. Get well, a rent so, a Blu-ray and, and on Man That's Black. fascinating because you run into a, diff- a similar thing with retro video games where if you play a retro game like an NES or Super Nintendo game on an HDTV, like the character sprites look like nothing. Like they yeah. just look like a bunch of garbled dots. And yeah. it's like, oh, shit. It's they create it for the limitations of the medium and nothing more than that because they don't need to. Everything else is a waste of money. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that's really interesting yeah. when you go back and stuff like that. To, to look at that and go like, wow, that looks like garbage, but I guess that was an economical decision. And like that was the right decision at the time to make the money at the time. But when you see something old like that and it holds up or it looks better. But it whatever. rarely does, especially with computer Sh- graphics. Yeah, no, well, not with yeah, computer stuff is hard because that. But you, supplemental computer graphics always look good. Spider-Man 2 still looks pretty good. There's a couple shots yeah. in it where you're like, me, but the it's first supplemental one, there's, there's with there's practical effects. One's in the first one. Like I even think of like when he's on the bridge, when he... When he swings up onto the bridge for the end of the movie, mm-hmm. some of that CGI is like it looks better than some stuff where you're seeing like mm-hmm. even recently or in the most recent Spider-Man movie. Because and taste like, never goes out of style. Is it because uh, it's is on? It, is it because it has the film thing working for it? Because there's al- it's almost like it's not as sharp. Just generally speaking, it kind of. I mean, yeah, it's as sharp old. as it can be, but it, like it right. sort of has the like graininess mm-hmm. as a crutch uh, I don't know I haven't watched those Spider-Man movies in such a long time Dude, go back and uh, give a watch back. I just, I just uh, revisited all of the X-Men movies I oh. wanted to watch them all in a row and mm-hmm. see what it felt like in sequence and how, how does it feel uh, it was quite the ordeal <laughs> but the first two X-Men movies hold up a lot in mm-hmm. fact, I kind of didn't like him for a long time, and then I watched him recently, and I was like, I guess I haven't watched him since I was a teenager. I love the X-Men movies because each one is a cultural barometer for what superhero movies are doing at the time. There's mm-hmm. no continuity, really, between any of the movies. Sure. Or, for, not not story continuity, but thematic continuity. When I, it's very much whatever is popular at the time is yeah. what the X-Men movie is what, doing. I, what you get more is, yeah, it's exactly that, a narrative of what how films are being done. Yes, and it's exactly. Almost, it's weirdly like... Um, educational, just like just to see the track of where things go in this in this one weird timeline of of a franchise. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because you you look at X-Men 1 and it's okay. so this is the Matrix. And then you look at First Class and it's like, okay, so this is Iron Man like this. That's the what they're kind of or Captain America rather would probably be a more apt comparison. Uh, I I don't know. Yeah, they're always chasing something. That's really interesting. they're, and they're always behind. They're like always one step behind, which is the, the comedy mm-hmm. of it. And that's why, I don't know, I think that's why Logan's going to kill us because it's really for the first time. Well, I, I watched The Wolverine and yeah. I thought it was pretty good. I, I enjoyed pretty it. Good. Um, it's and pretty I, good. I was like, oh, well, if he's making that one, it's going to be good. But again, that's, better. The Wolverine would fit right in in the Marvel Universe continuity. That would be, that could be a perfectly fine Marvel movie. Like if yeah. you would just, you could set that in the Marvel Universe and have it make logically make sense because it's so disconnected yeah. from the other movies. And then there's even like a giant robot samurai, you know, yes, silver samurai. Big ass right robot end. samurai at the end yeah. that steals it's his adamantium <laughs> for no particular reason yeah. at yeah. all. That, that part was a little cartoony, but I was yeah. fine with it. Wait, so are they going to deal with that? No, I, I are think... Are we ever dealing with that? got erased because yeah. of the timeline. That's thing. my favorite. So I... Um, Who cares? A lot of these uh, more recent ones I've not watched and I finally I got a hold of watching them. And my favorite part is that... <laughs> For the most part, all the X-Men movies didn't happen, really. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> that's how Wolverine remembers it. So he is this oh, right. centric character who holds everything we feel, and he's that's, only got one more movie left. And they're sure. like, they're probably wondering, what are we going to do without that guy? That's he's the only He's the only barometer of I've, what people feel and know. I completely forgot. That that was how Days of Future Past ended was that he still remembered yeah. the and, other and version. And Patrick Stewart's like, let me fill you in on, on what actually sure. happened. But like, <laughs> did so see Apocalypse? So when you watch, no, I, haven't oh, seen I, seen it. I still haven't seen it. Oh, it's um, I think I saw about half of it. I got it is the, not a great movie. Uh, so. It is like everything, everything that was sort of like that you, you know, some movies you might have some fun with, but there's these issues that are like, well, that's probably why it's not a magnificent movie. These things. All of those things are the focus of that. <laughs> <laughs> all of its faults and all of its thing, read things that are weird about it. 
uh, just don't work. I was just talking about this with Nick about. We'll talk more about this on the Logan episode a couple weeks from now. Oh yeah, save it for uh, Logan. <laughs> I just just to touch on this point real quick of how they they reinvented what Wolverine is with these movies. Whereas mm. Wolverine is a strong fighter because he's immortal and he throws himself into every fight just because he can't die. So like he doesn't really have any particular training. He's just like a fucking killing machine <laughs> right. because he doesn't die and he just keeps going after people like a Wolverine. Whoa. Whoa. But in the movies, he's just like a big, tall, muscular dude who could beat ass and is also made of metal oh, you know and has metal claws. What's so great is um, watching Hugh Jackman get more and more Huge Jack jacked. Because yes. in the first one, he's not like unfit. He's kind of he, flabby. Yeah, he doesn't he, have yeah, a lot in the front of him. Some guy. Uh, and it just bit. gets progressively more built. Yo, this is the Great Wall episode. Wasn't it? Or something <laughs> yeah. like that? And like, that's like how <laughs> disinterested we are in this great I know, wall. and that's, that's the thing. To, so it's Plus like Hugh Jackman in the Great Wall. I don't so know. many poor people Just put him in the wall and have him yeah. burst out of the wall at the end of the movie. It would have... See, it, Logan... I think in that we're we're circling in on like the mo- what this the Great Wall was and what it felt like, which is I think all you probably we all went in with very low expectations, sure. right? I, yeah, none. Like I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be garbage. Like, the it worst thing I've garbage, ever seen, and but it, it wasn't. It was almost non-garbage. worse than garbage. Where I wish it was garbage. It was so bland. <laughs> you <laughs> said that. Like, it's just, you wish it there was, was something. So, it, have fun this to movie it. was chewed gum. That's what this is, where you yeah. pick it back up and it has no flavor, but you're still chewing it. It's still gum, but it still feels like old. And well, just, I think um, you said something earlier about how um, you know Marvel changed how internet, yes. how movies are are done now. For that act, is large Tim H's point. I will just to credit oh, Tim sure. if you're listening, please. Uh, mm-hmm. But um, I think this movie is in a different way in the way it was produced uh, is sort of an example of how movies that are huge are made for an international audience. Yeah. And how does that affect the movie? So uh, we've seen it so many different ways. And I think this one's a new way where they really wanted to do well here and it didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and they really tried. But uh, you've heard about how Batman, they had all the issues with the script and Warner Brothers didn't give a yes. shit. Yes. And the reason they don't give a shit is because. killed in China. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to do great. And well, they're always right. They're, you know, Suicide Squad was one of the worst movies of all time. Made a bunch of money. As long as the intellectual properties are there and you got the explosions, it doesn't need coherency. Mm-hmm. But then on Marvel's side, they're thinking, hey, people are definitely going to see these Marvel movies now. Just give them to someone who's a bit more interesting now. So these yeah. next wave of Marvel movies seem all the more more interesting than some of the past ones because yeah. they're going they another. Know. They know we're because all, yeah we're they're going. they're going to see it. We're right? showing up. So there's these. Yeah. So now we're seeing all these different ways people handle international audience. So well, that's that's really the divide between DC and Marvel. Is Marvel's making it for domestic, DC's making it for international. Where it's but that, even that's just the but you know what the number you know what the biggest movie franchise in China is right hmm. by far biggest action movie franchise. Take a guess. It's something that you wouldn't. You would just be like, all right, it's middle of the road. Uh, it's Transformers. Oh. The Transformers movies are the biggest fucking movies in China. I think really? Revenge of the Fallen may be the highest grossing movie in China ever. I think I, I'd have to fact check that, but it's obscene how well those movies did over That's there. Uh, I fact checked that. It is not true. The highest grossing movie in China is actually called The Mermaid, which, you know, I have uh, I've likely not seen because of my distaste for fish people. But while I have you here, why don't you head on over to www.patreon.com slash reasonable beef and uh donate in whatever amount you want but if you give five dollars you get access to the mystery meat podcast which is a month-end podcast where we talk about our lives and times and all the media that we've consumed for that month instead of living our lives and loving our families uh yeah that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash reasonable beef i will get that little tune down uh, ditty down pat by the uh, next episode thank you uh, back to the show mm. and that's why when you're looking at it you're like why are they making number six like i thought we lost right. interest in this a while ago entirely an international but audience they, but they still do pretty good here but they do okay here they don't yeah. do the numbers that they should be doing here but they don't we're do starting, six movie but numbers we're starting to see how does the studio handle it when a movie bombs here but does great elsewhere because yeah it's it doesn't bad matter news. it's it, bad news for everyone but it doesn't matter because the money's getting made. Yeah, no, that's, it doesn't that, matter. No, but that's the bad. globalization it's, of the film industry. That's bad news. I just B- think. But is it bad news though? I think so far the reactions we've seen are the Warner Brothers reaction. That's that's what my impression's mm-hmm. been. Is that it's it's been if it as long as it does well over there, we don't need to worry about whether or not. it's... But is that your ethnocentric opinion where it's just like you're sitting here thinking like why the fuck 
what is WB doing? Why the fuck is this happening? And then it's it, they're they're bankrolling. They're making a shitload of money. They think they're doing they're doing great because at the end of the day they're making dividends on it. So I don't know if that's necessarily I, a bad thing or a good thing because I think that film audiences or film studios having an international audience in mind can end up making movies a little bit less insular when they're not up their own ass about making a million fucking Brazilian dollars. But it can also make shit. I mean, it's the same reason you talk about any blockbuster when it's too broad or whatever, when it's not doing, it's not Mm -hmm. doing a thing. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, Oh, I kind of wish you were just fucking like this. You wish it was doing a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of not. So it's like, that's, I think that's going global and having to have even more fucking people in mind besides America and the flyover States. And like, who's going to, you know what I mean? I think, uh, I think the, the thing that happens to a lot of these movies is when you have an international audience in mind, um, I think it can be really great. It means that you're thinking of all sorts of people who want to watch the movie. But actually, you're not always servicing audiences. You're sh- servicing like whoever has financed the movie from all these different factions. True. And now you have more notes to service, resulting in a more convoluted product. True. And plus, you, you do write scripts from a cultural perspective. Uh, you have stuff that's... You know, just by virtue of being a human in a culture that you, you yeah. the thematic elements you want to put in your movie, and then you end up with something that's so generically bland, yeah. like this. So that's so that's uh, um, you know, I, I I've read so many movie books about how the process is done, and it really is a miracle that any movie comes out good. We say this yeah. that any movie is made, <laughs> period. Yeah, it's insanity. But by making the process bigger and bigger, it'll make the miracle of the good movie even more rare. Sure, but, I think I don't then, know. And then do who knows we, what the hell I'm talking about? But then do we like yeah. embrace okay movies when they well, when we they were rise just above? Missing, uh, the, we were just nostalgic for uh, Reign of, of Terror, Fire, or, yeah, Fire, Fire, right. Fire, yeah, yeah. War. We missed the movies that were uh, smaller. So we were talking about Van Helsing yeah. two weeks ago. That's a great example. But it is. It is. Uh, we're we're always coming back to, and eventually this whole pot. We're just going to start the podcast and go like. It didn't do what it was wanted to do. Bye. And then like, <laughs> well, we'll do you know some good I mean? movies. Yeah. It's like it's, the force it, it's always the intention thing, and so and and the direction that we were talking about with fucking split and with M Night and and the, the the deftness of hand. Yeah. And when it's if this was in perhaps a different, stronger hand, with every same element, with the exact same story, nearly the same dialogue. It could have maybe like you know what I mean if they were just willing to change some stuff. On set some sure. days, same scene by scene, but like with someone again, it's like dad died. We should care when, yeah, when she now has to lead the army. But that's funny. That's that not you a, say. that doesn't necessarily mean a writing thing. That could be, uh, you could play up the moment of her realizing she has to, to look out over everyone. That's as simple as her standing up and looking out over the fucking whole wall with all these people staring at her. But also, like, if, if Zhang Yimo, yeah, if yeah. Zhang Yimo, like the most. Uh, one of the biggest rev- directors. One of the re- most revered Chinese directors of all time mm-hmm. isn't the deft the deft hand that you need. You know what I mean? Like, how can you overpower the studio? So, how okay. can you, well, as an artistic I think, person, uh, I think ultimately it's still a studio's movie, or yeah. still whoever the money's because Every and everyone who's been placed in the movie is just to assure people, don't worry, it's going to be great. So right. that includes Zhang Yimou, that includes Matt Damon, that includes all the That's Chinese true. superstars they had in the That's movie. True. And you know what? I wanted to touch on a point real quick about the globalization of movies and just the absolute flavor removal that it does. The Mummy. This new The Mummy movie. <laughs> I mean, really, when you yeah. were thinking about it, of the, the Mummy movies from the late 90s and the early 2000s, and now, how this is a reboot of the same franchise. Now, yes, it's a reboot of the Universal's The Mummy, right? Mm-hmm. Which is just, there's a mummy involved, yeah. is what that requires. Yeah. It's really confusing to me. But it is so bland. Like, the, the new trailer of this new movie I is just it. so generically bland. And It's, it's, it's going to be part of one of those uh, cinematic universes. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, can't great. wait for Those are great. That's gonna be God yeah. invest now. And they end in Monster Squad remake. But but I cinematic universes are stupid when they're stupid when they don't make sense in the first place. But even like with something like Marvel's doing it because the comics have always been connected. Same thing with, like DC wants to do it because their comics have always been connected. This has always took place in the same yeah, we universe. We know the right? Mummy and Doctor Jekyll and they were always <laughs> hanging out. Yeah, but they were hanging out in the yeah. old movie. Like that was the thing. And you do Wolfman meets fucking Frankenstein. Are we gonna do an Abbott and Costello remake though, just to like complete? Oh, uh, if they're in there, the reboot of Abbott. Yeah, and Costello. actually, I, I believe there is already a monster in Maggie Bear. It's called Abbott and Costello. <laughs> he got them all together. There's, the, you know what? He, they were the Nick Fury of the. <laughs> there, is, there is a legitimate to point to be made there, but we'll move on. Sure. I completely agree I just, with that. I just. I don't know why I felt like I'm 
because we uh, the, the the trailer didn't turn me off completely for the mummy or whatever. I don't know yet. because is, I'm excited I, by yeah, the idea weird. of the of the Universal monsters being yeah popping into each other's stuff because yeah. I like. But all if they're the just monsters. the monsters, like if they're just the monsters in this generic ass action movie, like without any kind of reverence for what those monsters originally were to film. I, I don't know, dude. I just don't think it's a worthwhile endeavor. We're going to get to the mummy when we because we, we're going to see it eventually. But I see what because I think the mummy is referring to the monster who's that's in it. But also I also him. think it's him. Right. Because yeah. he like yeah, somehow he survives. Die. He survives the plane. Yeah. So he's like immortal or whatever. Now mm-hmm. he's the mummy. So he's the mummy, whatever. Right. So and I think I can see the the again in the writer's room of the universal monster because they did. They had a whole like a powwow yeah. where everyone was like, so this is kind of what we want to do. I can see them getting excited about oh that's the that's the flipping it a little bit well right? it takes, it's in london you, right so what if the twist is that like he's just someone's mom the mummy he's the mummy you Tim, know what's funny is to think that me. they're like <laughs> what we need to do is make a franchise with the monster movies and they're like well which one do we start with you know? I know, really? and they're like well you know people need to go to one that they are, are familiar with they already saw The Mummy, right? Remember when The Mummy was the movie everyone saw? Yeah, let's just do The Mummy first. Sure. Let's well, do the one that could be a bunch of things. Like, yeah, not the one that has the an one individual that identity. Everyone's like, I've seen The Mummy, right? I better see it again. Yeah. I, I don't understand. Cinematic Universe. Because they, they, were, they, were, they were concerned about Wolfman. Because Wolfman just, they tried to do Benicio Del Toro. Yeah, everyone forgot about oh, that. Oh, and, and also I, Frankenstein, I, and also the vampire one, which were uh, all false true. starts they to the su- cinematic they universe that they've been be. doing. And then they, they retconned it and go like, oh, actually, no, 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 that's not the first one. This is the first one. They've done they, that three they're, times. They're always making those movies. There's always a Wolfman movie. Not necessarily. The Benicio Del Toro movie is the last, like, the Wolfman oh, okay. I could think of. That's, yeah, that's I guess legitimately I'm just saying werewolves. Werewolves yeah. in general. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, but even that, like, werewolves haven't been in vogue in a... Universal we context. We gotta get werewolves back in, dude. Yeah. I'm telling. I like. I you might have been joking, but I love werewolves yes, so much more big, than vampires and any other monster. Did Nikki not mention her werewolf story? No. She, don't scare me. No. no, no. <laughs> she, she, she should tell the story. But uh, uh, she used to date a guy who I also knew from college, who uh, was so obsessed with werewolves and and werewolf movies. He would make werewolf costumes. And he'd wear them on the full moon. No, that's just a furry. That's not. A, that's that's oh, all that okay. is. Yeah, uh, he would he would make teeth. Uh, <laughs> uh, he was like the blood and guts guy, but he was like, he was a blood and guts guy. Uh, if that makes any sense. I hate horror fans. Oh, he was not a fan. He was. Uh, he just was it. He was a. Gut, he was, he was yes. a horror. Yeah. But I want to talk about one last point about cinematic universes, sure. and I think the reason why we're so sick of cinematic universes is because of the false starts. There's only really been one. In yeah. the last ten, like Marvel's been the only fully realized one. Like DC, even DC's not has been, yet. Yeah, DC they've been trying. Colin, me too. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Where they're they're trying, and they don't really have an identity yet, which is a problem because they're right. four movies deep. I, I don't know, dude. I think like people four. people get burned out on cinematic. You know, Mar- Wonder Woman's number four. Uh, I think people just get so burned Holy out shit. on these kind of movies. Or they get so burned out on the concept of cinematic universes that we've never quite seen it fully realized yet beyond Marvel. I mm-hmm. feel like maybe if we gave it a shot, it could work out, but it, the next that's one's just uh, a the big undertaking. One. Yeah, oh, right. Interesting. Right. Yes. You know but how everyone's like, we be... need another Kong movie. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. I'm kind of psyched. It looks good. Yeah, that, it looks that, interesting. Um, like, I'm this, excited enough. I, I shouldn't the be, The color but I am orange makes that. me excited oh, okay. for that movie. I'm dead sure. serious. Where I'm just like, what was the last time I saw the color orange featured in a movie? Where it was like the sky. Yes. Have you seen yeah. the Logan poster? Is it orange? Oh, yeah. He's walking in the sunset like he's Johnny Cash. So <laughs> let's bring orange back. Orange bring a fire. Come back. Orange and black. All right. I think we might wrap this. Great wall. Yeah, I was. Did, wait, did we see that? <laughs> okay, last. Did, did you see that on the back of his jacket? It says "For Your Health" in that trailer. I just didn't realize John C. Riley. Oh yeah, I did not that. process that until I saw the trailer before Great Wall. I was like, oh okay, it's like a it's Dr. Seabrook reference. That's oh, like is it really? Phrase. Like that's yeah, for, your for your health. Like that's his. That's bizarre. Yeah, that's, maybe they're just having fun. That's cute. I guess they it's are. Cheeky. But cheeky. It's that, a little cheeky that, joke for you. Uh, why, we're why? gonna end it. Why that voice? I don't know. Cause it's a. <laughs> Don't smell the mic. Don't do that all the time. Don't smell the mic. Um, Your joke didn't get caught there. Yeah. <laughs> we heard what you said. Okay. We're going to end this on a three-headed critic. Right. Mikey, this is the rules of this game. Uh, you started off, mm-hmm. but we each say one word until it's a complete thought about the film. Okay. Mm-hmm. A la 
whose line is it anyway? Or uh, whose improv line? class? Yeah. And the points, do they uh, matter uh, a lot? They do oh, okay. This. Yeah, Actually, yeah. It's an ejector seat you're sitting in. Oh, if you shoot. get under 10, you get a. Yeah. You just I gotta, I gotta do a game with Drew Carey. Yes. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, uh, I start. Start. Okay, well, <clears throat> the Great Wall was a different kind of shit. <laughs> but it wasn't just though. Done there. It was a totally generic kind of shit. <laughs> was it but it was a new level of shit because it of it being this the international the uh, yeah the creation Chinese American co production. Absolutely. So and, and just just to wrap it up, I don't want to say that I hated this movie. No, I didn't hate it. I nothing to this movie. Yeah, which I feel like is worse. I was I, surprised enough. I, not not surprised, but I again expectation was so low that when it didn't. I didn't hate it. I was like, cool. I uh, walked yeah. out like I fine. wasn't uh, wildly offended by anything only because it would all it was all so familiar anyway. Right. Yeah. So nothing was like that's the same old stuff I've seen before. So Rainbow Tower. Um Rainbow Tower is yeah, some inspired hot air balloons, in, some inspired cool. images. Rainbow Tower reminded me of uh, Mario sixty four. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Peach a slide. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was waiting for slide. Okay, Mikey, do you have any plugs? Anything coming up cool? Um, we were bears. Uh, <laughs> been, episodes are always available. Okay. And they should there should be new ones at some point. We bear. Yeah. You can't you can't you can't divulge that information exclusively on Reasonable uh, I don't, Beef I, episode I, 13. I, I do not know when uh, okay. when they come out. We'll watch Three Bear Bears uh humorous three show. Bear, we, three, bear, we bear three, three bears. bears. There's what did I say? Three of them. Three you said bear three bear bears. We bear bears. We bear yeah. bears. It's a weird title. We b- we, we bears. Bear. Um, Dom, do you have anything coming up? Cool. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Okay. I'm working on stuff. I said not not yet. Not Thank ready. you, Mikey. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thanks for coming in. It was fun. Thank you so much for seeing Great Wall. Oh yeah. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, thanks everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful uh, evening or daytime. Mm. Bye. 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 Mm.